What's up everybody? This is Tilla and it is Wednesday and I uh, just wanted to talk to you guys about something. You know, some of you guys have been asking me to do more prophecy videos and I will do more prophecy videos, but I just want to talk to you guys. If you guys really want to learn um, about prophecy, I know it's hard. I know it's very hard to learn learn prophecy. You got to really focus and you got to really study. Um, you really got, you got, Okay, so there's three schools of Bible prophecy interpretation. There's the preterist view where uh, people are going to say all oh, these all these prophecies have been ha are done. They were in the past, right? Which is not true because there are still some things that are happening that are, are going to happen in the future. Um, and then there's a futurist point of view. There's a futurist school of uh, Bible prophecy interpretation, which they are going to say that all of the prophecies are going to be far in the future, which is also not true. The real way to interpret prophecy is the historicist point of view. Historicist point of view, and that's everything happens on a timely basis. Like everything happens from. If you guys remember Daniel two, Daniel two says Babylon was the head of gold, right? And then after that, there's going to be another uh, kingdom, the kingdom of silver, and then after that kingdom, there's going to be a kingdom of bronze, and then after that kingdom, there's going to be a kingdom of iron, and then the iron and clay. So it's a timeline. Prophecy goes with history, so it's a historicist point of view, all prophecy. But I know that Bible prophecy could be very hard to understand, um, and you guys have been asking me, how do you understand this, how do you do this, how, how do you uh, interpret this, this and that. I have a book for you guys, it's called The Great Controversy. The Great Controversy. This is a really, really good book if you guys want it, there's a link in the description box. And this book will give insights on um, Bible prophecy as it was happening. Not only that, but this book will also give you detailed insights of what's going to happen in the present, like right now, present truth, and in the future. So if you guys want this book, The Great Controversy, there's a link in the description. I think it's from Amazon. I think it's from, yeah, Amazon. And you guys can buy one. So let's get the day started. Some people have some mean things to say about me, so let's do it. So a couple weeks ago, I think it was a week ago or a couple weeks ago, I posted a video. Um, it's called Why the LGBTQ Hate Christians. And someone by the name of Red Pill Canada um, unsubscribed. Here's what he says. The Bible teaches very clear in a few places that sodomites, a.k.a. Homos, homos, homosexuals. So sodomites, a.k.a. homos and pedophilia, ped pedophiles can never get, get saved. So I don't know what you are talking about. Sodomize? Okay, here's, here's what Jesus said. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish. Any should perish, but should come to repentance. What, is, what does any mean? Okay, so if you're a murderer, are you, do you belong in that any column? If you're a liar, do you belong in that any column? So the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What does all mean? Yes, that means homosexuals as well. It did not say all excluding homosexuals. It said all should come to repentance. And here's another one. A um, guy named King Kingdom Minded replied and said, Attila has always been on point and as biblical as it gets. But then he said, after hearing this video, I am not sure what the message is. Is it don't judge? We are, we are all sinners. I would have to respectfully disagree. No, the message, the message clearly, if you guys really paid attention to the, to, to the video, the message clearly is that we can overcome sin. I've seen homosexuals overcome the homosexual sin. We can overcome sin, not by our power, but by the power of Christ. We can overcome sin because nothing is too hard for Christ. Nothing is too hard for God. We'll talk about this some more in a little bit. I got to go to work. And so how can I possibly have time for a devotional? So moments is really what I wanted to have is to create an opportunity for them to have a moment with the Lord. Now, usually I don't do moody radio because sometimes what they say are not sound doctrine. But there are some gems that they also say, you know, there are some gems that uh, you find in moody radio. You need time with the Lord. Yes, you do. I don't know about you guys, but uh, for me, I don't know about K-Love. 
some of the songs are kind of mm, I don't know I mean no offense to those who like Caleb that I mean that's cool but for me it's just not my style I like hymns like I like soft like hymns like that are sung well you know what I mean so I'm here I'm not in front of Target not in front of Target I'm in front of you guys can't see it but I'm in front of Walmart now a um, couple more thoughts about what uh, that guy said on the comment section on um, Red Pill he said that homosexuals cannot be saved he said that is biblical well first John 3 15 says that all murderers do not have eternal life John said it he said all murderers don't have eternal life well guess what Moses was a murderer but he has eternal life don't he I mean we even saw him on the Mount of Transfiguration he was there with Elijah and Jesus Christ how was he there and he died well because Jude said that Michael the Archangel came down for the body of Moses probably to resurrect him most likely to resurrect him because first Corinthians says that the voice of the Archangel can resurrect the dead in Christ so does Moses have eternal life yes but did he murder someone yes so how is that so then the Bible clearly states in first first John 3 15 that all murderers don't have eternal life well there's a little thing called repentance and that's what Moses did he repented of his sin every sinner can sincerely repent of their sins including the homosexual sin including the LGBTQ uh, XYZ sin So the famous Bible verse, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Shall not perish. Remember, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So whosoever believes in Jesus Christ will not perish and have everlasting life whosoever it's an open invitation to anybody to to all sinners but if we don't repent then we're lost now I believe that God has the power to help every sinner doesn't matter what kind of sin it is God is powerful enough to help you gain victory over your sins whether it's homosexuality whether it's pornography whether it's lying whether it's a blasphemy whether it's murder Whatever sin it is, God is long-suffering, God is merciful, and He is faithful to forgive you. So even though homosexuality is a heavy, heavy sin, and it's an open rebellion, people can gain victory over that sin. You can gain victory over the homosexual sin. And that's the point that I was trying to make. So don't count them out. Yes, of course, we can't let them have an office in the church knowing that they are in open rebellion, open sin. But if they repent, if they say no to that sin, I believe that God is merciful and God is faithful to forgive. And God can give you a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance, sixth chance. Believe me, he's given us millions of chances. But now it's back to work I go. All right, so we're going to do one more Uber or Lyft ride. And then I'm going to take you guys somewhere where I go every Wednesday. It's going to be somewhere where we can learn healthy living. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Let 
let's read a couple of Bible verses. Here's what Nehemiah 9 verse 17 says about those who rebel, who are in open rebellion against God. Here's what Nehemiah said, talking about those who openly rebel against God. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. Here's another one, Psalms 103 verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Let me ask you guys something. Is God merciful? What does mercy mean? So will he give those who are in open rebellion a chance to repent? Is homosexuality a sin? Of course it is. And if we don't repent of this sin, we will die. If we don't repent of any sin, we will not be saved. We will die the second death. You know, the Bible says, Jesus actually says, Be ye therefore perfect, just like your Father in heaven is perfect. There is an old saying that says, God's biddings are also His enablings. If He bids you to do it, He will enable you to do it. If He bids you to repent and to overcome these sins, any sin, if He bids you to do it, He will enable you. He will empower you to do so. He will give you the power to overcome your sins. Because he did say, be ye therefore perfect. That's a command. But we say, that's not a fair command because we can't be perfect. Nope, we cannot be perfect. But God's biddings are also his enablings. He will give you the power to be perfect. You can't rely on yourself to be perfect, but you gotta have faith that he will give you the power to be perfect. It's not on you. It's not on you. The only thing you got to do is to have faith that He will work through you. So will God forgive those who are in open rebellion? Yes. Why? Because the Bible says plenty of times that He is merciful. He is slow to anger. He is gracious. Will God forgive those and save those who are in open rebellion? The open rebellion called homosexuality? Yes. But only if they truly and sincerely repent. Is homosexuality a desire of the flesh? Yes, it is. Just like lust is a desire of the flesh. So those who are not homosexual, but sees a girl or a man and then lusts after her or him in his mind, in his heart, or in her mind, or in her heart, you are in the same boat as the one who is homosexual. If you sin, period, we are all in the same boat. But not to worry because God will give us the power to overcome these sins. And God is faithful to forgive us if we repent. So the lesson for today, God is powerful enough to give you the strength and to give you the power to overcome your sin, whether it's lust or homosexuality, whether it's lying or murder or hate in your heart. God will give you the power to overcome those sins if you repent and ask for forgiveness. Thank you guys again for watching. If you guys like this video, please like and share. Share with your friends, your family, your co-workers, your relatives, whoever you know would be blessed by this video. And for more Christian content, please subscribe. And if you guys want to support this video ministry, please donate at schoolforprofits.tv. And again, if you guys want to learn more about Bible prophecy, The Great Controversy. You guys can read that book. There's a link in the description. It gives you a detailed insight of what's going to happen in the future. Praise God always. See you guys tomorrow.